kind of walk through. All right, now. Nah. Okay. So I have this in my downloads folder. I'm going to get rid of this because that's an accident. But I have that sample IDTT file that we made from the Word document on the hub. And I'm going to make a new document. I'm also going to struggle to not use key commands. So we'll just go to File, New, oh, Key Commands, File, New, and I want to make a new uh, document. Depending on what version you're using, this might look a little bit different. I think they kind of changed it up for 2018. And you all get to look at how fast my computer works. Okay, so a couple different options here. Um, you may have some different, what I'm concerned about here is I wanted to find the width and height of the image or of the, of the book. I'm also gotta change this to inches. I default to picas for most of my measurements, which is the different type of measurement, um, but we can use inches for this. So typical uh, textbook size, pretty large. So I'm going to make this eight and a half by 11. Uh, take a look at these other options. Um, I could start making as many pages as I want. I could start on a different page. I just want to make it one and one right now. And single column. And then we have the option down here to specify our bleed. Now, this would also be helpful to determine with your printer beforehand, because maybe your printer needs more than an eighth of an inch. They might need three quarters of an inch. They might need, you know, who knows. Um, eighth of an inch is kind of normal for a lot of the stuff. And so, look, I'm going to ignore for right now. Um, but these are the basic things we're concerned about. Width, height, you know, the unit, number of columns, and then the bleed. So I'm going to say create. And let's open up this totally blank document. All right. Okay. So now I want to get that text file that I made into this document. And that the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to place it. I'm going to get a file, place. I'm going to navigate to wherever I downloaded that file it's in my download. And I'm going to say OK. And after we say open, we'll have a little sort of cursor with something attached to it. Everyone kind of seeing this so far? We're good. Um, you can even see there's a little bit of text there. You know, mine says physical chemistry one also available. So we know we picked the right file. It gives you a little preview. And I'm just going to click anywhere here. It'll make a text frame. That's what I'm saying, that's what this refers to. I'm going to go over here and select my selection tool. And this gives me a couple different options. I can make it taller, smaller. Uh, control or Command Z is going to be your undo. But for right now, it looks pretty gross, right? Like it's all just the same thing. You can't tell what any element is. It's impossible to read. So we need to start adjusting a couple of things. But I'm going to do one preparatory method first. I want to show all the visible characters. And on Word, we just got to sort of press a little button and we could see where all the hard returns are, where all the tabs are, spaces. Here, it's a little different. We want to go to View, Extras. I'm going to say invisible up here. Nope. About hidden. This is me trying to do things without key commands because that's how I do pretty much everything. There we go. Oh, there it is. Type show hidden characters. So if we want to go to type and show hidden characters. And we'll just get a little primer because you might see a lot of these in the future. There we go, zoom in. So Let's go down, normal space characters, hard returns, same exact thing as in Word, but it's a different color. 
uh, if we see these red carrot characters, uh, does anyone recall what that refers to? We talked about it a little bit earlier on, just as a refresher. Yep, structure. So now if you were communicating with an outside designer, that's a very important thing to note because your outside designer might have no idea what that is. And he might say, well, he or she might say, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, put these two lines together. I'm going to get rid of this hard return. So they start at the beginning of that first line and they delete and they say, I don't know what that means. And they delete and then they say, okay, cool. I got what I wanted. But now there's a problem. They deleted some structure tag. So now we don't have any method of knowing when we go to the ebook where these page breaks are. So if you have a designer working in the system, you definitely want to make sure that they are aware to sort of ignore those or, or rather just not delete them. There's still ways that they can delete these characters and maintain them, but they definitely don't want to just start deleting things. And that's what I mean about when I said earlier, communicating with your designers about working within a certain system, because what they don't want to do is say, okay, well, I need a new style for this. So I'm going to call it series title. And this might not be something anyone remembers, but what would happen to something called series title once it goes through the hub? Because we know it's not an SCML style. And thankfully the hub will not delete the text. But what it will do is say, I don't know what that is, and it'll change it to P. So, you know, worst case scenario, your designer doesn't remember what a head means and they say, well, I can't remember what that means. I'm just going to change it to H2 because that's what they use internally. Well, now all of a sudden all your heads are incorrect and you've got to go through and separate out them from the normal characters. So we just want to make sure if we're communicating with an outside designer or a typesetter that they know that this is the framework, the framework is in place and they should be aware if they want to make changes, maybe they go to you and they say, Hey, I like, I need a new style here. I need to change something up. You know, can you help me name that properly? Just so they know that that's an issue. Okay, yeah. So just as a refresher, there's a window palette up at the very top, a window menu item, and that's where everything kind of lives. So there's a whole styles section here, and that's where we can select paragraph styles and view that window. Same thing with, you know, if you wanted to see the pages, that's right there. Um, if you wanted to go to characters to look at your text, a lot of that stuff is right there. So if you're looking for any of these windows here, feel free to ask me, but they're all under um, window. And then one other thing that I'll mention again is that there's a help button up at the top there as well. And that'll do sort of like a smart search as you type. So if I were to type paragraph, still didn't do that good, uh, paragraph. It gives me these menu options to see like, where everything kind of lives. So even if you don't remember where exactly the window item is, you can always kind of find them through these, um, through these options, just like I did earlier where I couldn't remember where hidden characters live. Okay, I'll just briefly mention a couple other characters that we're gonna see. So we see this, that's a tab character. Um, you might also see, so I can't remember. I'm not going to remember that. You might also see something that comes up a lot. Uh, it's called a non-breaking space. And Kathy, no, you don't need that for this lesson. We're going to use that next week. Uh, you'll see these in ellipses. This is a, what's called a non-breaking character. Again, a similar sort of carrot shape, but blue this time. And that basically means that these pieces of text will not separate. If it comes at the end of a line, the, the whole um, word pair is going to move to the beginning of the next line. Um, there are things we're going to see next week that automatically build these in to common pairs. So if you have like 8 a.m. or 25 percent, there's a tool that's going to put a non-breaking space between them so that the typesetter doesn't need to worry about those things. They don't need to worry about those bad breaks. Okay. What did I do? Um, So now we're going to start flowing text to the end of what's called our story. Um, all this text that is sort of in a single text flow is what InDesign calls a story. So I'm going to make a new page. I'm going to 
flow all the text into the rest of the book. One other thing I'll mention real quick. This little thing right there, that kind of red cross, that just means there's overset text, which means there's more text in the story than the frame can show. So we'll go to our pages window. So if you don't have that open, it's window, pages. Right now, you should just have one, it's number one, uh, have the letter A applied to it. So I'm just gonna make a new one. Now I wanna extend the text flow from one frame to the next page. And we're gonna do it so that it continues to flow text until it stops, uh, until it reaches the end of the content available. So I'm going to click on that red box. You can see it almost looks like when we initially placed the IDTT, got a little bit of text next to it. But rather than just clicking onto this page, I'm gonna hold down Shift and then click. And let me know if everybody can see this. Your cursor is gonna change a little bit when you hold down Shift. Now it has this little kind of like snaky arrow next to it. And what that'll do is now it'll just flow to the end of the book. Are we good so far? Oh, all right. Um, one other quick just hot key that I'll mention. Your space bar brings up your grabby hand so that if you need to move stuff around, you can hold down the space bar and kind of drag it around. I will probably do that a lot without thinking, so I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that.